Racing is nothing else than gaining an advantage over your rivals, whether it be through a high level of driving skill or a superior racing car in any imaginable aspect. The Indianapolis 500 is one of the oldest and most prestigious racing events in the world, on par with other legendary races such as the Monaco Grand Prix or the 24 Hours of Le Mans held annually since 1911 with the goal of covering 500 miles, which is equivalent to 200 laps, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It is a part of the IndyCar series, which was sanctioned by CART at one time, but the Indy 500 was regulated by USAC and the rules differed slightly. This meant that something that was legal at Indy 500 was not allowed at other events. It also created an opportunity for a beast of an engine for a single Indy 500 race, crushing everybody in hopes that nobody would get to know the real deal before showtime. Regarding engine regulation, a significant aspect was the allowance of a custom-built double of red cam engine with a maximum engine displacement of 2.65 liters and a maximum boost of 22 psi for participation. An exemplary manifestation of this allowance is evident in the Ilmore Chevrolet 265A engine, which demonstrated exceptional success between the years 1986 and 1991. This particular engine generated a noteworthy 720 horsepower at 10,500 rpm and was utilized in a range of prestigious chassis by esteemed manufacturers such as Lola, March, Penske and True Sports. USAC introduced a rule to incentivize smaller companies to build engines by allowing the use of a stock block pushrod engine. This engine had to contain some production-based parts and Buick was quick to seize the opportunity, constructing a race engine on the stock overhead valve block, but they were consistently petitioning for even more relaxed regulations. Additionally, these units were also permitted to use 30% more displacement and generate a high boost of 27 psi. This decision was justified, as a road car engine block could never match the capabilities of a purpose-built race engine and high boost and displacement made them more competitive. However, the relaxation of rules for push engines in 1991 for the Indy 500 proved to be a critical moment that went largely unnoticed. He was involved in a very heavy crash at Michigan where when he drove the Alfa Romeo had a suspension failure, hit the wall very, very hard and severely broke his right leg. Mario Ilian of Elmo Engineering recounted an intriguing story about how he, along with Roger Penske and Paul Morgan, gathered around a dinner table in Phoenix in 1993 to brainstorm an innovative idea. When asked about the power potential of the engine, Ilian estimated a minimum of 940 horsepower. Initially, they were unaware that they had discovered a loophole but they were well aware that any leak of information could result in the 10-month development project being scrapped. The team took it as far as putting weird descriptions on the drawings sent to part suppliers. The engine was officially named the 265E as a continuation of the 1994 265D used in other IndyCar events, despite being entirely different. It had to maintain the same length and the crankshaft had to be positioned at the correct level for ease of engine swapping between the races. This was a race against time conducted with utmost secrecy. They were cognizant that either the regulations would be modified before the race or that other competitors might attempt to take advantage of the same loophole. Their objective was to develop a clean sheet, purpose-built race pushrod engine solely for a single race with full awareness that it would inevitably be prohibited. The engine was later dubbed the Mercedes Ilmore 500i, with the Mercedes providing the branding and assistance at the last minute, and the 500i designation marking it for exclusive use at the Indy 500. 
This Ilian's design was his first pushrod engine that he proposed completely from scratch, with no shortcuts taken. As per the new rulebook, there was no longer a requirement for a stuck block, basically allowing teams to create whatever pushrod design engine they wanted. In addition, the engine was able to take advantage of the larger displacement and high boost. The engine block was cast from aluminum and the crankshaft had five main bearings with four counterweights. Moreover, the engine benefited from the larger displacement as well as high boost. In order to meet packaging requirements, the V-angle was reduced to 72 degrees from the previous overhead cam design's 82 degrees, which in turn increased the engine's height. Due to the narrow angle, the camshaft placement was relatively high, push rods not as long, and the engine utilized spur gear cam drive, resulting in a maximum RPM of 10,500, which was all the more impressive considering its two valve setup. Each push rod was operated through roll finger followers, and the engine was boosted by a Garrett turbocharger. Ilian estimated a power output of 940 horsepower, but the engine actually delivered up to 1024 horsepower at 9800 rpm with an additional 700 revs to spare before pads will start flying out. This provided an incredible advantage over any rival, producing 150 to 200 horsepower more than any other engine. The V8 also boasted a substantial torque and the car was astonishingly fast, able to reach speeds of 250 miles per hour down the straight. The engine's torque was so high that initially the drivers would get wheel spin coming out of the pits and hit the rev limiter, said Mario Ilian. The Penske PC23, which housed the powerful Mercedes Ilmor 500i engine, was a dominant force during the 1994 Indy season scoring an impressive 12 victories out of 16 races. The likes of Alfred Junser Jr., Paul Tracy and Emerson Fittipaldi drove the car and it was only days before the main event that the power plant was unavailed. With Unzer and Fittipaldi leading the pack with just 16 laps to go, the race was poised for a dramatic finish. However, Fittipaldi made contact with a wall, leaving Unzer to fend for himself. The only driver to finish the race on the same lap as the Penske car was a Canadian rookie named Jacques Villeneuve. Even 30 years later, the story of Penske's impressive win and media coup continues to captivate audiences. Sure, we had not seen such an engine after that, but it was fine work from the team developing such a project under top secrecy. Little Al came out and gave Emerson a big thumbs up. He bore him no ill will for what happened. And now they're teammates, and I think that that cementing of that relationship then is key to what's happening right now. 18 laps to go. He's certainly looking up. That's for certain, sure. You can see that.